Machine learning in a very simple term is looking at examples and learning from those examples. So coming up with answers just based on looking at a whole bunch of examples. What is the difference between machine learning and, and business intelligence? Business intelligence looks at the past looks at what happened up to this point, and it can do a very good job in reporting what happened. Machine learning, on the other hand, looks at future. It tells you what is going to happen, predicting what most likely is going to happen based on what has happened in the past. What changed was deep learning. And, and the key differentiator between deep learning and traditional machine learning is that in deep learning, you essentially collapse this entire process into one step. Give examples to a complicated model, and the model will automatically learn what the features are. It will do all the work that your research scientists were doing automatically. We're talking about millions and millions of, of uh, nodes or operations for a deep learning model versus only a few up to 100 or even like thousands of nodes on a classical model. So all of these complexity allows us to alleviate the work that the research scientists had to do and just let the machine try things and learn it by itself. The change uh, from, from a traditional uh, media that we were using to digital media enabled a lot of references that we can actually use to train machine learning models. This year and last year, this is what's happening. We went from machine learning is kind of cool, it's exciting, but it can handle the exception cases to, wow, machine learning can outperform humans. And to give you an idea, humans are really good. Like, it was only after we started doing machine learning that we realized humans are really, really good in doing and performing tasks. So what is this uh, general AI concept? The general AI concept, in a nutshell, is, is the ultimate dream or vision for, for computer researchers and machine learning researchers. It is, it is the day that machine can learn by themselves without any intervention from humans, and they can decide to solve any type of problem that you give them. You don't have to switch to a different type of machine. You have this algorithm, this black box, that learns how to do everything, kind of like a kit. It just learns and it does things. What does this look like? Let's, let's talk about an example, uh, the Atari game. So here's what happened with the first version. The first version was doing random things. It's just like moving around and sometimes occasionally hits the target. As the machine plays, it starts noticing that, ooh, if I move the bar right under that dot, I can do really good. 120 minutes and it can already outperform most humans. The crazy thing is in 240 minutes, it comes up with a pretty good strategy. This, this type of machine learning solutions they're called reinforcement learning. They're a next generation of machine learning solutions that are coming up where the models are, are becoming simpler and simpler and we're relying more and more on the machines to learn the right way of doing things. If you haven't heard of AlphaGo or if you haven't played the game of Go, first, it is an amazing game. It is an extremely complex game in terms of possibilities, but it's a very simple game to play. The rules are extremely simple. The possibilities are 1.74 times 10 to the power of 127. There was a trick in AlphaGo. AlphaGo was looking at the best experts' plays. So it was actually still relying on humans to play the game, and it was learning from them and replaying better than them. AlphaGo 0 is one step further. Remember I said we're quickly moving away from playing at human level and outperforming all humans? AlphaGo 0 learns by playing by itself. And after a while, it, it learned all the top strategies that humans had played. It surpassed them, threw them away, said these are not good. It came up with a whole new set of strategies. The Google Brain team grabbed the exact same algorithm, uh, which was used for AlphaGo. Uh, it's a reinforcement learning algorithm. And we applied it to one of the Google's uh, uh, data centers. Now, to give you an idea, Google data centers, the biggest cost for us is cooling. So it's extremely expensive. And, and we do a pretty good job in optimizing the cooling to the best that we can. So these are not like unoptimized systems. These are systems that are fully optimized with experts. Like we have people who are, who are well versed in the art of cooling a data center. And there is an art. So we applied the same technology to it. And there was a sudden drop off of uh, power consumption up to 40%, which is quite impressive. So these technologies are no longer fun games like the Deep Blue that was, that was playing game of chess. These are things that we actually directly apply to our businesses now. But we hit this blockade. We hit this threshold where companies cannot adopt machine learning technology because it's very expensive. Very expensive to do a lift and shift, move away and use these new APIs that we have. What RPA enables for, for I think, the entire industry is a quick, cheap, easy adoption of that. Sean was mentioning they would like to go to an agile methodology where they can quickly try things and see if the solution is exactly what they were looking for. Well, RPA enables that. You can very quickly try these cutting edge machine learning technologies and see, is, does it really solve the problem that I have or not? So I think that's all I had. I'll pass it back to work.